Let the, rest the meeting is reconvened with all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I have a motion for the executive minutes of November 13th, 2013. I'll move them. A second. Already discussion. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholz? Yes. I may have a motion for the regular minutes of November 13th, 2013. I'll move them. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholz? Yes. Seems like our sound system is working perfectly today. And motion for the executive minutes November 25th, 2013. I'll move them. Second. Already had discussion. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholz? Yes. And I have a motion for the regular minutes of November 25th, 2013. I'll move them. A second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholz? Yes. Welcome, everyone. This is our last meeting of the, the year. The year flew by once again. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and a very happy Hanukkah And we, as we approach Christmas and New Year's. Just a, a few things before I come down to uh, take care of some other business. We lost in the world, lost someone special last, last week. And, you know, as, as I was looking at it, I look at world leaders in, in two ways. You know, there's the leaders that you would love to be able to just shake their hand and thank them or listen to them speak. But then there are the rare leaders that you're just happy to have been able to be on earth the same time they were around. Nelson Mandela was such a man. He was very special. Born in a country where most residents have no rights, had no rights, he saw the need for change. And while, while he started the battle using sabotage and violence, he finished it in peace. And in a country whose rights are not based in the colored skin anymore. Tomorrow is, is his memorial service. Flags in Madison Borough and throughout the world will be at half staff. And that shows the respect that he demands and should get. And as we reflect on his life and the impact on the world, I want to just share two quotes of, from Nelson Mandela that really hit me. The first one is from his inauguration. And you can imagine, after spending 27 years in prison, that his tone could be very different. It could have been a tone of revenge, but that was not Nelson Mandela. His words on the day of inauguration. The time for healing of wounds has come. The moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come. The time to build is upon us. We enter into a covenant that we shall build a society in which all South Africans, both black and white, will be able to walk tall without any fear in their hearts, assured of their inalienable, inalienable right to human dignity, a rainbow nation at peace with itself and the world. And that's how he started his, started his presidency. And then from his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, it was great words of wisdom on how we should follow our lives. I have walked the long road to freedom. I have tried not to falter. I have made some missteps along the way, but I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. So thank you to Nelson Mandela for climbing those hills for so many. And shifting to our employees of the month, want to recognize the team that really makes things hum in this great building. Uh, Hartley Dodge Memorial, it is a treasure and you can imagine keeping this in great shape. And so as people come in here and recognize what a beautiful building we have, and also getting ready for everything that happens in this building. So we have two employees for the month of December, 
Louis Monez, the DPW, for his ongoing work above and beyond in assisting the borough clerk's office in setting up for council meetings, such as tonight, special events, and especially his assistance on busy election nights that can drag on for hours. And then also Michael Morano, who you see here during the daytime hours, also from DPW, his work at maintaining Hartley Dodge, building and grounds, and his dependable assistance at completing all tasks. You'll see him out there taking care of our front lawn. You'll see him during the day polishing the brass in this building, which can be, a, I think, a full-time job in, in itself. So if you see him around the building, please thank them. Also, also want to recognize through our um, Patriotic Celebrations Committee and with help of uh, Councilwoman Vitale that you've noticed in downtown Madison on Saturday, we had all our flags on the uh, light poles and, that, and also we had a flag at half staff in honor of Pearl Harbor. And of course, looking back a little bit longer to uh, two weeks ago, or a week and a half, Friday in Madison, day after Thanksgiving, it was a chilly day, but it was an incredible day. The work from uh, Carmen Toto and the whole Toto family, the auxiliary police for all their effort and all the parade volunteers, it was a great event. Um, and there's a couple of pictures out there that show Waverly Place, just a mass of people, and it just a great moment. And if you didn't hear the story about the the donated tree, donated by a family that when they were touring Madison trying to figure out where to move, they saw the Friday night parade and said, you know, this is the town I want to move to. And they donated their tree. And so they became very much a part of it. And a little reminder that our reorganization meeting is January 1, as has been our tradition, but we are pushing it back to 1 p.m. So um, you can get a little extra sleep and come on down here at one o'clock for the annual reorganization. And before I come down below, one other thing I want to recognize, I just got a little news that Carmela Vitale is getting an award in Atlantic City this, this week for a Realtor of the Year. Congratulations, Carmela. <laughs> Ed, if you can come up here for a second. <laughs> this is Ed's last meeting, and we would recognize him on January 1, but he's going to be off in Colorado and join a little skiing with the family. So, Ed, I want to thank you for stepping forward. I know it was just a short time, but you hit, hit the road running, and we greatly appreciate everything you did for your uh, time in the council here. And on behalf of Madison, we have a, a gift a pewter box with uh, engraving, yes, with the uh, engraving of Hartley Dodge on there. Thank you so much. Hey, fellow councilmen or ladies, I want to thank you. Uh, it's been short. Actually, it's the second time I've filled in over the years. Uh, we are departing a great town, and uh, we're retiring down to Florida, um, and that's where I've been. That's how I get this tan. Um, we've lived all over the country. We've lived in uh, Florida, California, New Hampshire, Syracuse, and uh, always found Madison is, is quite unique. The sense of community, uh, the sense of active participants and what's going on is just amazing. We're going to miss it. And um, I will be back. I still have business going on up here, but uh, most of the time it's going to be in Florida. But thank you. And, um, you know, it's a great community, great community, great school system. All my kids have done very well in the school system. And uh, it's, it's dedication and it's great to see so many people in the audience that care. Keep it coming. Thank you, Ed. And <laughs> Thank you again, Ed. And uh, for all the things you've done for Madison, we, Ed and I worked together on a computer project for Camp Mary Hart through for uh, Madison wow. Rotary. So it was, he's been working hard. And I guess with the fact that he has finished off two terms for uh, elected council members. He may earn the title of Mariano Rivera of uh, council, that he comes in to close the game. <laughs> so congratulations.
Let me have the boys cross country team. One of the things we like to do at the council meetings is recognize effort, whether it is serving Madison as a council member or success in sports. So cross country team, come on up here, please. Don't be bashful. Yeah, walk up here, don't run. You know, it's... There you can take both sides there. Mind your, you're on camera, you're going to be on TV. This is a big time here. <laughs> Uh, we have a certificates to present. I will let, read what it says here. The mayor and council hereby congratulate the members of the Madison High School Boys Varsity Cross Country Team for achievement in winning the NJAC Liberty Division Championship. This accomplishment required extraordinary effort, outstanding teamwork, and dedication and perseverance. We commend the team members for their commitment in reaching the goal. We recognize head coach Dr. Mark Latticetta for his leadership and training and coaching. And the dedication and achievement of these outstanding athletes have brought, brought great pride to the Borough of Madison. In testimony of our appreciation, I hereunto set the official seal of the Borough of Madison, signed Robert H. Conley Mayor. So congratulations on a great season and a lot of work to get there. Sawyer Stano. Coach or captain, anyone want to say anything? Or? Yeah. All right. It's all, we're all in it together. So. But con con congratulations on a job well done. volleyball team, please come on up. Congratulations on a great season for you. And regretfully, I, I did go to one game. I got an uh, invitation from one of your strong fans asking me to come to the uh, semifinal state match, which is played right in Madison. Regretfully, I had a meeting that night, so I got to see all of three points. But it was incredibly impressive, the, the level of volleyball. I, just, I, I am a volleyball fan once uh, played. I even have a crooked finger from a, uh, a block that didn't go, quite go the way it should have. So... And the, your level of play far exceeded anywhere I was at my uh, peak. So congratulations. And also, I understand that during the season, head coach Steve Fenton had 400th career victory. During this, congratulations, 400 career victories. <laughs> it certainly represents a lot of hard work and dedication. The Mayor and Council hereby congratulate the members of the Madison High School Girls Volleyball Team for achievement in winning the NJSI AA Group 2 Section B Championship and the NJAC Independent Division Championship. These accomplishments require extraordinary effort, outstanding teamwork, dedication, and perseverance. We commend the team members for their commitment in reaching these goals, and we recognize Head Coach Steve Fenton for his leadership and training and coaching. 
The dedication and achievements of these outstanding athletes have brought great pride to the Borough of Madison, and in testimony of our appreciation, I hereunto set the official seal of the Borough of Madison. Abby Milza? Abby, congratulations. You can, what, what we should do is volley the, what, the applause on each side. So uh, alternating one side. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Olivia Alexander. Olivia, congratulations. Maddie Hines. Elise Basilino. Elise, congratulations. Margie Taylor. Kelly Quinn. Catherine Clark. Christina Scavone. Ali Shahidi, <laughs> Brielle O'Donnell, Aaron Berger, one per customer, Jen Litchfield, congratulations, Taylor Camp. So now we can big hand of applause for this great effort. Congratulations. <laughs> I just, I'd just like to acknowledge my assistant coach, uh, Hector Martinez, for all his hard work. He's been around a little bit longer than I have. Uh, and also, I just want to say that uh, I'm honored to, in, to be, you know, a small part of such a wonderful community. And I hope it can continue. Uh, I enjoy uh, working here in the community and everything about it. So hopefully we go on. Again, you have represented Madison very well. We're very proud of you. There is also another team with major achievements, and that was the girls' field hockey team. They are somewhere else tonight receiving uh, an award, so we hope to get them here in the new year. So, and before I sit down, on behalf of myself, the council, and all of the Madison Borough, we wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we'll see you early in the new year. You don't have to leave yet. You can stay for the whole time. So... <laughs> Casey said a date. Okay, we will um, move on to reports from committees. Health, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, National Influenza Vaccination Week is December 8th to the 14th, um, so it's not too late to get your flu shot. Uh, recent influenza activity shows that it's on the rise. So uh, if you have not gotten your flu shot, you could go down to uh, the public uh, health nurses at the health department, call for an appointment, and um, you can have your flu shot. If you're 18 and over and you cannot afford the vaccine, you can contact Marlene Dolan for a free voucher that is available through the New Jersey Department of Health program. Also, the reminder about the preschool children, um, you know, we're coming up on December 31st. They have to have that. Um, otherwise, they do not get to attend school in uh, January. Um, on December 4th, the Madison Health Department held an adult health screening program, and they were able to provide the service to approximately 30 residents and employees. Uh, they also had their animal licensing, along with the free uh, rabies clinic, 
on December the 7th. Um, there were 165 animals that were vaccinated at the clinic, and to make licensing easier, it was offered during the clinic, so 80 uh, residents took advantage of that extended uh, licensing hours. Um, now, all dogs and cats must be licensed each year with a late fee imposed after January 31st, and you need to have the rabies vaccine that's uh, valid through October 31st of the year of renewal. Um, all of this is on, on the Health Department website, so take advantage of looking at Rosenet and, and remembering all of these uh, dates, because they're important. Um, to continue to assist the residents with licensing, the Madison Health Department will offer ex additional extended hours uh, December 18th from 4.30 to 7.30 in the evening. January hours will be announced as needed. Dates and times, renewal packets are posted on, on the Health Department website. Um, tonight they're having um, their uh, free cancer screening for men at six o'clock. Um, and that was open uh, for anyone, uh, any men over 18 years old in Madison, Chatterborough, Chatham Township and uh, Springfield. And there's still vaccine for adults who are underinsured and uninsured, so uh, please get in touch with the, um, uh, the nurses down at the health department. That's all, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Catanello. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, regarding leaf pickup, we are on the third circuit, uh, and we, we still have uh, free leaf bags at the garage and yard waste. Um, we'll end on December 18th, uh, Christmas tree and yard waste recycling uh, at the Borough Garage we held January 4th, 2014 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, as the year comes to a conclusion, I would just like to uh, uh, review some of the work that has been done around town um, and some of the projects that were uh, discussed and prioritized by the Construction Review Committee. So since our last meeting, the Green Avenue construction project was completed by General Contractor Cefeli and Sons and Subcontract Smith Sondi Corporation. Um, similarly, the water main replacement for the entire Ridgedale Avenue corridor was completed by Garcia Construction. The 1.2 mega BTU Hartley Dodge uh, boilers are now fully operational and autom automatic as of this week based on a contract awarded to Omega Services. And the earlier asbestos remediation was completed by Jupiter Environmental. Train Corporation will continue to work on building controls and computer monitoring throughout the Christmas break. Uh, the last completed project since our last meeting was Tilcon, New York uh, for the sports fields parking lot site remediation at the former Bailey Ellard Fields property. Also this year, Sampson Avenue and Rosedale Avenue were completed in May. The Central Fairview signal was completed. Uh, the 2013 work totals, $2.7 million expended on capital uh, pr construction projects and another 150,000 or so adding miscellaneous water and sewer utility projects. I'm happy to report that Rosedale Avenue received an award uh, from New Jersey Society of Municipal Engineers. Um, this is the second uh, NJSME award that's been uh, awarded uh, to our staff. Uh, the first, of course, was the, uh, um, uh, the 49 acre field site um, a complete streets document was also produced in-house this past summer. So except for the Hartley Dodge boilers, all projects were designed with bid and contract documents in-house. All construction administration was completed in-house. All grant applications and administration were completed in-house. This was a very productive year for our small staff and I congratulate and thank them for their work. Um, just uh, going forward, the advanced set of construction uh, plans for 2014 will be uh, complete in January and distributed to the Construction Review Committee. And, it looks, and, and our priority roads are Academy Road, Belmont, Vinton, Pine Tree, Durwood, and Fletcher as one group, not unlike how we did uh, uh, Pine, Rose, Cedar, and Beach, and then Ridgedale Avenue. Again, uh, I just want to point out what a fantastic volume and uh, quality of work our team does. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, we all owe um, uh, not necessarily a, a gratitude, but we all should congratulate our staff and administration 
uh, on being able to do such quality work uh, while at the same time really eliminating a lot of the uh, uh, waste that had previously been associated with construction projects. We do everything we can internally um, and that really goes a long way to reducing costs and improving quality. So with that, please uh, everyone, if you see Bob walking around or any of the staff, shake his hand, say thank you, buy him a drink, whatever he does, and uh, off duty of course, uh, and uh, you know, <laughs> thank you very much, that's all for me. Thank you. Certainly a great year of accomplishments. Thank you for reviewing that. Community Affairs, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. That's a hard act to follow. Um, remember last year, uh, Hurricane Sandy hit Union Beach, and the seniors over at the, uh, on Walnut Street, they got together and they collected and put together about 700 items of warm clothing. They just made their final delivery to Union Beach with the cold weather setting in, and they also delivered some musical instruments down to them. So. I thank them for keeping that small town in their hearts and their minds because they're still hurting down there. Also in January, they're going to be starting a class called The Fear of Falling. Um, it's aimed at seniors who need to be made aware of trip hazards in their house and should they fall, what they need to do in terms of how to get up and if they can't or if they're hurt, who to call for assistance. And then finally, uh, we're in the midst of our shopping season, so wherever possible, Please frequent our downtown shops. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Ms. Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, last week, the fire department um, had a dinner. Um, the owner of 39 Green Village Road had a terrible fire um, a few weeks ago, and our de fire department, along with many other uh, fire departments in the area, came. And um, the building has been declared a loss, but there was no loss of life. There were no other homes destroyed in the fire. And in appreciation for what our department did and all those other first responders, uh, uh, the owner, Mark Yeager, um, hosted a very lovely dinner at the fire department. The police department has been busy the month of November. They responded to 2,424 calls for service. Uh, they responded to and investigated 49 motor vehicle crashes, conducted 274 motor vehicle stops, issued 201 summonses, and made 21 arrests and conducted 101 raider posts. They also were very busy in um, continued training. Sergeant Misha went to the West Point leadership uh, training. Various officers did long gun qualifications and domestic violence refresher courses. And there were other courses on bloodborne pathogens and hazmat, active shooter seminar, and um, all squads trained up at the county for major crime notifications. And I think that is it, Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Finance and Borough Clerk, Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are a number of uh, items on the agenda tonight that I just want to touch on very briefly because we, in fact, may vote on them without having discussion. Uh, the first of which is the uh, fact that we're dedicating all FEMA money to the Capital Improvement Fund. The reason for that is, as Councilman Cannonello mentioned, we've had a very big year in, in this year. It looks like we're going to have a very big year next year as well, and so the issue of how do you pay for it all comes up, and that's a, a very nice unfortunately non-recurring, or maybe I should say fortunately non-recurring given the source, but nevertheless it's a, it's a source of funding that would uh, suit us well in the Capital Improvement Fund, and that's what we intend to do with it. Uh, to date we've collected 312,000. Uh, we could receive an additional, up to an additional 500,000. Is that correct, or is it come into, We're going to get close to a million in total. Close to a million yeah. now. It's a great revision, thank you. Uh, secondly, I'd like to point out that there's an item regarding what's called an emergency appropriation to the Madison Electric Utility. Um, if I had written it, I wouldn't have used emergency, and I just want to tell you, it's not an emergency in the sense you may think. There's always a timing issue with the utility. We buy power because our residents demand it. We bill for the power, and we get billed for the power, and those two things don't happen at the same time. So there's a period of time in which we have paid out money we have yet to collect. Uh, typically, our appropriation is sufficient so that we get through that. This year, 
we've had a, a major uh, increase in the amount of power our residents have used, and we have fallen short. But we have other sources for those funds, and they will be paid back. So it's as if we're making a loan to ourselves. Um, so I wanted to clarify that. Don't take the emergency word too seriously. <laughs> Thirdly, I'd like to point out that there's a uh, mention of a contract with our health, to ser health services department with Springfield. We have indeed uh, had Springfield as one of the municipalities to which we provide such services. They've been with us for not quite, but almost a year. And starting on January 1st of next year, they were to go on a month-to-month -month contract basis, not exactly a secure relationship. Uh, fortunately, they've come back to us, they've considered it among themselves, and they've agreed to a two-year contract. So we know for sure, for at least the next two years, Springfield will be, in effect, one of the uh, municipalities that we service. Uh, just one final note, you've heard me mention a couple of times that Groups of us have been going to municipalities that also have their own electric department to see how they do it, whether there's something we can learn from them in the provision of power, billing systems, etc. And we had a very productive day where we visited Sussex and Butler, and uh, both of them gave us a lot of things to think about. There's nothing to announce tonight. We have a lot of work to do, but I'm hopeful that sometime next year we'll come back to you with uh, some interesting proposals regarding our electric utility. Thank you. Thank you. Utilities, Mr. Rebholtz. Thank you, Mayor. Short report. Um, removing existing transformer former bank cables and poles from 39 Green Village Road for to facilitate the demolition. And they are continuing to install new poles, secondary and primary voltage cables on Oxford Lane and Canterbury Road. Thank, Thank you. you. Any uh, communications and petitions? A none received, Mayor. All right, now we are on to our uh, first of two invitations for discussion. This is the one that we will uh, have the limitations on, and we'll have a discussion a little bit later about combining our two uh, invitations so we don't have to do sit, have people sit around too long. But as a reminder, for the items you can comment on or ask questions are the DDC presentation, the dedication of FEMA reimbursement funds, request of open space trust funds for deer fencing, nice. and there's a whole series of um, year-end items that uh, we'll be going through. I won't read them all because they're uh, fairly routine, and you, if you have any questions, or they can comment on those. We have the um, bylaw review also. And then you can also uh, comment on any resolutions that are listed. With those restrictions and guidelines, please step to the lectern, state your name, your address, write the same on the clipboard, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. And as you uh, start speaking, please uh, uh, mention the agenda item or the resolution you are <clears throat> commenting on. Anyone wishing to speak under those guidelines? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we're now for the uh, DDC presentation. Chairman of the DDC, Eric Range, the, re the re retiring chair of the DDC. And council liaison, Bob Landrigan. Well, okay, while Jim's getting set up, I just want to talk briefly about the DDC. You know, how many times have any of you had a relative or friend come into town and say, look how unique Madison is, the way we keep our history, the way our streets are maintained, the, just the look and the feel of the town. And you know, how many times have you walked downtown and said, darn, this is a neat place to live? Well, that is due in large part to the Downtown Development uh, Committee. Um, I've had the honor and privilege to be their liaison for the past two years. Um, and what I will say about them is this, and it's, it, it's very simple. They are very forward-thinking, they are very creative, but they are also very responsible. Every project that they've done downtown, and I know everybody hears this a lot, that there's no taxpayer impact, you know, no tax dollars will be used. Well, this is truly the case here. Every project that they've implemented, 
they've done with money that they have raised through different fundraising efforts. So this group of volunteers deserve a great deal of credit. And a lot of it goes to, uh, a lot of them are sitting in this room right now. So at this point, I'd like to turn this over to Eric Range. He's gonna walk you through some of the projects that they've done and what they're looking to do. You're already jumping ahead, Jim. <laughs> I mean, it's a good one to start with, but you're jumping ahead. <laughs> it's a little out of focus. There, much better. There we go. As uh, Bob Landrigan mentioned, uh, my name is Eric Range. I am, uh, and the mayor mentioned, I'm the outgoing DDC chairman. I've had the pleasure of being the chair uh, of the Downtown Development Commission now for uh, finishing up my second year, and I have served on the DDC uh, for the past nine years, so I will be term limited out of the commission, um, and for those of you keeping score at home, that's 26.4% of my entire life I have served <laughs> <laughs> on the Downtown Development Commission. Um, we've got some other commissioners um, here in the audience tonight that I'd like to stand and uh, have the audience recognize. We have Craig Arizuma, Mark Fabianski, Maureen Byrne, Carla Brady, and Mike Kopis. These are just a few of the 18 commissioners that make up the Downtown Development Commission. Uh, so without further ado, let me recap what we've been doing for the last year. Um, I want to keep this brief for everyone's benefit, um, but if you didn't know what the purpose of the DDC is, here is the legal jargon from the, uh, from the ordinance that created the, uh, the DDC. And basically we're an advisory group to uh, the mayor and council for important uh, items that impact the downtown from development and redevelopment in the downtown to stimulating economic growth in the downtown area. And we've really taken that to also include uh, other business districts, including the east end of Main Street and other areas as well. Um, <clears throat> as uh, Bob mentioned before this, um, the DDC is a self-funding uh, commission. Uh, we do a number of fundraisers and work with the Main Street, uh, the Madison Main Street Foundation uh, to hold those funds. So things like our portions of the Taste of Madison and uh, the proceeds that we earn from putting on Bottle Hill Day and several other fundraisers all go back to go back into the good works that the DDC does. Um, since 2011, uh, a quick calculation shows that the DDC has invested somewhere in the neighborhood of $150,000 um, of monies not from the taxpayers uh, to do projects and programming downtown. Uh, and that's, you know, in no small part to all of the support that we get from our partners in the community and the residents of Madison. We have a number of committees that do all of that work, and those committees are actually consisted of both uh, members of the 18 commissioners on the, the commission itself, uh, which naturally, given the number of committees, many of us serve on more than one, many of us chair more than one, come to think of it. Um, so, but we also have great volunteers um, outside of the DDC who assist us in managing some of our uh, larger projects and individual projects. Most notably, uh, May Day uh, is coordinated by several volunteers um, that are not actually commissioners, and the Taste of Madison uh, is a partnership of both uh, commissioners and the Rotary and, and others as well in the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the MAD Shuttle, which is the Madison Avenue Direct, is a partnership with uh, individuals from Drew, FDU, and St. E's to provide that service to both downtown and the campus communities. 
Uh, our Public Improvement Committee is probably the committee that gets um, the most attention. It's also the one that spends the most money, which is probably why they end up getting the most attention. Um, and they're really the physical brick and mortar improvements that the Downtown Development uh, Commission uh, really participates in. And these are just a few of the projects that have gone on recently. Uh, the new alleyway signs that went up last year. Um, earlier this year, the clock uh, was in disrepair. Um, and this is another piece. Not only do we not use taxpayer dollars for things like this, but um, we have some really resourceful individuals on the Downtown Development Commission. Uh, we went out to the one and only company in the world that said they could fix our clock and it was roughly twelve, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, whatever it was. It was in the tens of thousands of dollars to get the four faces to kind of sync up and not have to be reset manually and all this other stuff. And two of our commissioners got together and said, that's crazy talk, we're gonna do this. And they literally bought the components and built, rebuilt the inside of the clock at Waverly Place uh, for you know, a third of the cost. Uh, to make sure that we could do other great things with other money. So it's not just, um, being good stewards is more than just being uh, financially responsible, it's really being innovative as well. And Craig Arizuma was really the, the leader on, on that particular, um, particular project. Some of the other things that are more recent, Cook, the Cook Plaza uh, alleyway, if you've been there in the last like five days, you might have noticed um, some new lighting fixtures and uh, kind of a refurbishment of that area. The previous trellis has now come down and, and given that a little bit of a spruced up appearance. Um, the tree grates on Lincoln Place, after Lincoln Place was redone, uh, the sidewalk width with the new tree wells was a little narrow. We uh, inserted tree grates around those shade trees to allow uh, easier pedestrian access and to make those a little more viable. Trestle lights under the trestles on Waverly uh, Place and, and others and more to come on those as well to improve pedestrian traffic between those. Uh, we just replaced the Waverly Place um, white lights on the trees uh, to coincide with the uh, Christmas tree lighting. And the gum buster, which works uh, DPW has to, to clean the sidewalks and make sure that no one's stepping in uh, gum and other fun things on the sidewalk. That's, we assist, um, that was originally purchased many years ago by the DDC um, and some maintenance on that this year. Um, so that's some of the work of our Public Improvement Committee. Our Sign and Facade Committee uh, works with new merchants uh, and others as they come through and make sure that uh, new businesses fit the look and feel of Madison uh, and, and can really welcome people through uh, the, new, the uh, new businesses into town. We also have a very interesting project that I'll get to momentarily um, concerning this photograph of the uh, old Clearview Cinemas, which is now Bowtie, uh, and a project that we're working on for 2014. University Relations um, is a group that works, uh, yes, which is a very old picture, Carla Brady, um, <laughs> is, is a, a, a group that works with our friends at Drew and FDU and St. E's in integrating and offering services to the uh, tens of thousands of students, faculty, and staff from the three campuses that are just up the hill from downtown. Parking and redevelopment is another uh, co committee that I just want to touch on real briefly. This has seen a little bit of a resurgence this year under uh, the leadership of Russ Stern, who's also the vice chair of the DDC. Um, and one of the projects that we've actually uh, been working on recently is a redevelopment proposal um, at the old Jaguar property uh, where developers looking to come in there and they're working with the zoning board uh, for their variances, but the DDC has had an opportunity to work with members of the zoning board and Sue Blickstein, our uh, borough planner, uh, and the applicant in making sure that that property 
uh, becomes a fitting gateway into downtown Madison. So rather than just kind of going, oh yeah, sure, meet the, meet the criteria of the ordinance, uh, we're kind of taking that sign and facade concept and also moving it into creating a kind of a gateway <coughs> property there. And the applicant has been very, uh, very responsive. So we're hoping for good things as that process continues. And the DDC is really looking forward to uh, doing more projects like that. We, of course, um, do a lot of programming downtown in addition to our brick and mortar improvements. Uh, our most notable and probably our largest event is certainly uh, Bottle Hill Day. Uh, this year we raised uh, about $40,000 uh, profit from, our, from Bottle Hill Day this year, and that's the lion's share of the dollars that we use to reinvest into the community. May Day uh, is our first, uh, first weekend in May to spruce up the town, and that really is an all-volunteer effort uh, and is, costs really no one much money uh, because of sponsorships and others. Uh, the farmer's market we have each year, uh, this year it's first season in one location all season long for a very long time, so we're excited about that. Um, and having it remain in downtown. Our Drew University town tour, which is the brainchild of Carla Brady uh, and others at Drew University to bring all well, 403 freshmen uh, from Drew University uh, downtown this year uh, and the last five previous years, and the last five previous years to uh, show them around, show them where they can get a bite to eat, show them the movie theater, show them the train station. They get a little talk about Hartley Dodge, uh, and it's a really great uh, opportunity to have them really connect with our community. The Taste of Madison is another uh, banner event, which we all know about. Uh, the Mad Shuttle, which is the Madison Avenue Direct, is a grant-funded uh, item that the DDC and Jim Burnett uh, helped us uh, get the grant from New Jersey Transit along with Trans Options, who manages the grant for us to fund a shuttle that services the three university campuses and downtown. It's open to all borough residents uh, as well as the college campuses and gives another opportunity for those constituencies to get to and from campus and the downtown. And that's uh, marketing and other funding support is provided by the DDC. DDC is also a uh, partner in the Love Madison Shop Madison program, which is a partnership between uh, the Assistant Borough Administrator's Office here at Hartley Dodge, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Downtown Development Commission. This year, the DDC funded and was able to distribute 5,000 Shop Madison buttons, 2,000 car magnets, and 40,000 uh, shopper bags uh, that our merchants uh, gave out uh, through purchasing in downtown to reinforce the Love Madison Shop Madison brand. We work uh, with the Chamber to do the Madison Magazine each year, well, each every three years, I should say, uh, but it's available uh, to new residents and our realtor friends um, and others who are interested sharing all the great things in Madison. Kind of a brief rundown of our investments in our events. Uh, as you can see, uh, the things I just talked about. The one thing that I did want to kind of point out here is the art banner sidewalk gallery and gala this year. Um, the DDC spent a little over $5,000 to do um, the art poll program, which was uh, a new program that we partnership through a partnership with MACA. Uh, from May Day to Bottle Hill Day, we had several uh, original pieces of artwork hanging downtown. Um, and it really gave a new, a new kind of twist to some of the things we've been doing downtown, and it was a huge success. Um, I think we were all not really expecting the financial support at the, at the gala and the auction, and we had pieces sell for, for five, six, seven hundred dollars um, at the gala, which um, what was really truly inspiring. Of course, they were all Madison-themed ones, so those of you looking for good Madison art next year and artists, Madison themes sell well in Madison. 
Uh, so we were really thrilled with that and the dollars that we got uh, from that program will be reinvested next year to expand that to additional artists. Um, and then we come to kind of looking ahead uh, for 2014. Uh, we've got a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, as I mentioned, there's, we're a relatively small commission uh, of 18 people, uh, but we really try to do an awful lot. Um, and these are just a few of the things that we have uh, kind of in irons in the fire for 2014. Uh, some of these are long-term projects, some of them are more short-term projects, uh, and some of them will require council support, so we hope, uh, we ho <laughs> we hope that that will come. Uh, but just a quick uh, a, a, an historic walking tour, both a digital version and a not so digital version, um, to share all the great historic stuff uh, in downtown, the buildings, what they look like, uh, you know, 100 years ago versus what they look like today, uh, and being able to move through downtown. We're looking at a proposal um, to be able to offer free Wi-Fi. Uh, throughout the downtown district, so while you're out on the sidewalks and, and engaging in commerce, shopping Madison, uh, you'd be able to pick up Wi-Fi no matter where you are. Uh, the Madison Theater Marquee. This is um, the project that I, I mentioned uh, concerning the other photo. Uh, this is a really exciting project uh, that Sign and Facade and Craig Arizuma um, will be Undertaking in 2014, we just approved uh, the dollars to do that. Um, for a very long time, we've been working, we were trying to work with the former tenant, uh, Clearview Cinemas, to improve that facade. Um, the paint colors are off, their windows are in disrepair. Uh, Bowtie, who took over the property from uh, Clearview Cinemas, has agreed to uh, invest uh, nearly $15,000 in facade improvements uh, to improve their facade in a historical way. Um, and to coincide with that project, they've given the Downtown Development Commission approval to uh, work with them to restore uh, the marquee that is um, hanging off that building to a more historical, uh, to a more historically appropriate uh, sign. It's been covered in aluminum over the years and has some neon and things like that. So we're, we're looking at that as an opportunity to restore that and make it the proper gateway sign uh, from the train station uh, onto Lincoln Place and downtown, which is really what it was if, if anyone's interested somewhere in this building, I think, is hanging that photo of the marquee where it simply says Madison on the front as opposed to a brand. Um, I don't know if we'll get that far, but um, we, we're certainly wor working with Bowtie to make that a gateway presence for us. So we're really excited about that and have that really be the finishing touch to all of the work that has been done on Lincoln Place in the last few years. Uh, and the, f the last project that we have uh, kind of in the, the, the hopper uh, and on the slate right now for 2014 as we move into that is some additional wayfinding uh, for downtown and throughout the borough. Uh, welcoming to downtown at entry points, kiosks at the train station, uh, wayfinding to assist uh, the large number of visitors to the Shakespeare Theater at Drew. Uh, improved parking signs. We have our, our wayfinding signs for parking, but when you get to the lots, some of those signs are, are now nearly 20 years old, so we want to improve those. Um, so, some improvements and maps at the MRC to direct visiting, uh, visiting teams to downtown um, so they can come down and spend some money shopping and dining uh, downtown after their games. Uh, and again, the, the historic Madison signs. Here's a quick list, and I think I've hit almost all of them. Uh, of some of the great groups that we work for, uh, work with uh, throughout the year, the universities, the Garden Club, the Shade Tree Management Board, and the Friends of the Shade Tree, the Rotary, MACA, the Chamber, uh, the Public Schools in St. Vincent's, uh, the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, Historic Preservation, the Library, and, and Scout Groups, and there's probably a dozen more that I could rattle off uh, if given enough time. 
uh, because having a great downtown is really the is not just the, the business of the DDC, it's really the business of the entire town. And most importantly, our, our, our favorite partner, <laughs> shameless plug here, um, is the mayor and council. And we've had an incredible run um, of great councils and great mayors, um, certainly during my tenure uh, on, the, uh, on the commission. And we really do look forward to uh, working more with the mayor and council, the uh, the new project we did this year, this, the, poll, the art polls would not have uh, succeeded without uh, the mayor and council supporting it and allowing us to put those up in the right of way, so we appreciate that. And looking forward into 2014, I know the first thing that the DDC will be asking for is likely $50,000, give or take, in capital improvements for general sidewalk repair. Uh, we recently did a tour downtown uh, identifying projects that we could fund and projects that uh, need to be undertaken. And one of the things, particularly in the older areas of the sidewalk improvements like uh, Waverly Place, um, there's just some general maintenance that needs to be done. There's some tripping hazards out there. Um, and, the, and the exit uh, from the Waverly Green lot out to Waverly Place um, needs some repair and some attention. So we're hoping that we can get some, uh, some support for, for, for something along those lines coming into the budgeting process in 2014 and then uh, support for lots of the things that we do that we don't ask you for money for. So uh, without further ado, that's my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions from council. Any questions or comments? Tried to do that as fast as I could. It was very <laughs> thorough, Eric. Very thorough. A lot of stuff's going on. Great, yeah. great, great report. Thank, thank you for. Great job. Thanks so much. And Eric, thank you for your. Uh... <laughs> I just want to say thank you for your nine years. Your uh, over a quarter of your life on our uh, on the DDC and your and your leadership as a chair. It's been a pleasure working with you. So thank you pleasure. so much. Thanks so much. Okay, moving on to dedication of FEMA reimbursement. And uh, Ben, you pretty much already introduced us. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if any, um, anything, oh, we're ready to go. Okay, uh, Ben, anything okay. else to add from your uh, opening comments? Yes. I, I, uh, we, we should talk about it in a little more detail, yep. and uh, I'd like to defer to Councilman Ladringen, who will discuss uh, his uh, negotiations with FEMA and the likely outcome. Okay. Um, as you recall, during Hurricane Sandy, the borough incurred a lot of costs to restore um, power, take down trees, and so on and so forth. Uh, the borough spent roughly... $1.3 million. We're getting back 90% of that uh, through negotiations with FEMA. So we're getting back a little over a million dollars. It's, thank God, and hopefully it's only a one-time event, but because it's a one-time event, uh, we think it's appropriate that that money now be put into capital projects. Okay, Ben, go ahead. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the, although we're not at the point of discussing in any great detail what the budget will look like for next year, uh, it's uh, safe to say that the appropriations for capital are likely to be on the order of three times the magnitude that they've been in 2013. Uh, this last year, we had put a million dollars into that fund. We're trying and looking for as closer to three million, and the reason for that is to meet the demand. It's not as if we're making up projects, quite the contrary. But there's a lot of improvements in the town as... Um, Councilman Catanella went through, and indeed you can see it as you drive around, but alternatively <coughs> there are many streets that haven't benefited as yet, and indeed we need to take care of them sooner than later. So we'll have much more detail as we go forward, but uh, it, it makes a great deal of sense to take a, a non-recurring event like this that spins off serious money and put that money toward the Capital Improvement Fund. We, in fact, have been doing that uh, routinely for the last several years. So this is not out of line. It's a continuation of a practice uh, that we've uh, been doing, um, I believe, for five, six years now. Thank you.
Any, any other comments or questions? Okay, this resolution is uh, on the consent agenda, 338, and reinforced once again, there are probably many towns out there that don't have a Bob Landrigan and others working hard and leave this money on the table. So it's great that we're getting this reimbursement and can reinvest in our infrastructure. So thank you. All right, request from Open Space Trust Fund for deer fencing at, at the MRC. This is from uh, Cosign with Austria right. and Bob. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, the MRC Advisory Committee um, has been working on the rest of the acreage um, for passive um, recreation, and um, it's been meeting regularly. And one of the things that we are looking to do is to set up an area that is fenced in where we can grow back the native species and the trees. And um, so with that, um, Stephen Stocker of the committee, and he's here tonight to briefly dis explain what the request was, came to the Open Space Trust Fund Committee, uh, the advisory committee, and requested up to $43,000 for deer fencing. He is also looking to get a grant um, that he's applying for in January. And um, the Open Space Committee uh, approved a resolution to support this request and send it to council and ask that the council approve the financing. So Steve, would you like to come up and briefly discuss this? As I was about to say, we, we knew it was special, but you've got a tie on, so thank you yes, for... There you go. <laughs> I was told when they asked me for a lot of money, you should wear a tie. Uh, for a tuxedo. Uh, well, I didn't ask for that. Uh, thank you all for uh, listening to uh, and putting up with my uh, presentation. As you know, we've been working for the last couple of months to figure out how to best use the land that we left on the 49 acres. And uh, we'd like to make it a community project where we can pour in the most help from the most amount of people in the town. Uh, that said, uh, this is the, the entire 49 acre area. The high school is here. This is an old map from Google. They haven't updated it yet, so the fields aren't on it. But our new fields are here, and the community garden is here. And this area in here is the area that we're talking about restoring to its natural state and preserving, hopefully bringing back the base of trees that are growing in there, barberry, mainly barberry and rosa flora. So the goal is to return the area to its natural condition, and this will give the town a number of benefits. It will preserve this unique space. Madison, a space, this lodge, or Valuable trees, native trees, oaks, uh, black whore trees. I don't even know what that looks like. And, but there's no understory growing. There's only these 70 foot trees down. There's no replacement growing due to the deer. The grazing, they eat everything in sight but the barberry and the rosa floor. Uh, this area here has already been improved by an Eagle Scout project. They've put in a cross country training track. It's gotten a little damage from Hurricane Sandy, but uh, we're working to fix that. To help us, Shade Tree has put in a number of trees that are native to the thing. As part of our project, we'd like to and to allow seedlings to grow there so that we have 
will replace itself as the larger trees reach their age and then die a natural death or get blown down by the tree. Eagle Scout uh, thing, uh, project also put in these QR codes that uh, allow people with their cell phones to click onto it. They've put these around uh, the along the uh, country path uh, for five or six like and such. Best. This is the understory that is there right now. Uh, this is an example of Barberry. It's nearly impenetrable. There's quite a lot of it. Showed you earlier, and it's thorny. It approaches on the pathway that the Eagle Scout all of that barberry and put them on And it could. Oh, you're not picking it up? Oh, okay. <clears throat> and this is what. After the barberry is taken out and removed, this is what it would look like. We haven't at all decided on what kind of signage to put up. That's, that's going to be coming. I stole this picture from the Great Swamp and doctored it up. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we plan to have a name for this area rather than just have it be the wetlands. And... Uh, and then as native wildlife comes back between the birds, small mammals, and amphibians, then add additional signages uh, to uh, be part of an educational program. <coughs> uh, identify, we'll probably end up putting cue codes on that so that they can click on it. About each individual species. Uh, there'd be opportunities for various uh, groups to uh, build native habitat <coughs> for owls, bats, birds that, uh, that isn't really there now. And uh, down the road, there'd be room for opening the area up to more artistic expression <laughs> uh, to further enhance the area. So... Special thanks to Mr. Landrigan for allowing me to present this early from uh, out of context with his major uh, presentation in January, but that was done because of uh, the entire Madison Recreation Committee has to be thanked, along with council member. Ben Wolkowitz, the entire Open Space Committee, with special thanks to Astrid Bailey for pushing the project ahead through Open Space, Betsy Ullman from the Environmental Commission, and Jean Krakowier of Shade Tree Commission. Oops. And we have a number of advisors that have volunteered their time and effort. They've walked. And that is it. <coughs> Jim, how do I shut this off now? <coughs> Got it. All right. Good guess. Cheers. Rob? Any questions? Is, I have several. Uh, is the $43,000 just for the deer fencing? No. Uh, the 43000 the entire budget is $23,000 for the deer fencing. And that's in flux because as, as, uh, uh, when I had first made up the budget, uh, it's been put to me that maybe we should have the gates installed professionally as they will take the most wear and tear and are the weakest link. I don't have a price on that yet, but that, that number will either go up or down uh, depending on uh, the quotes that I get. 
the uh, uh, $10,000 uh, was for boardwalks, and that, that was given to me, uh, an estimate from Bob Vogel. Uh, he got that from Jaeger Lumber. Uh, now, there's some question as to whether we'll ever put the boardwalks in, and so if we don't, then the, uh, I don't need the 43,000, I don't need the 10,000 for the boardwalks. Another 10,000 uh, is for setting up a kiosk, the signage and stuff like that. And those monies will vary depending on price quotes once the signage uh, decision is made as to what kind of signs will go on the property. So I can't really narrow it down. Fair enough. But uh, I'm applying for a grant from yep. PSE&G through Sustainable Jersey. And should we get that and be that fortunate, then the $43,000 will be lessened by the $20,000 grant. So Likewise, we're on... Who the pays for the barberry removal? How are you going to get rid of the invasive species? No, You're just going to volunteers out there digging it up with shovels. The, the removal of the invasive species, how does that get done? How does that get funded? Or is that all volunteer work? That's all volunteer work. Okay. So I have AmeriCorps coming in on December the 15th. Fair enough. Okay. But once we fence deer, once if we do what you say and we deer fence it, where do the deer go? Uh, the deer fence is set up. Uh, will, I mean, will they become a nuisance to residents along Burnett Road and all uh, the other actually, areas? Actually, no. It's, it's uh, turned off. Or will they just oh, okay. go on to Route no, 24 right. and get hit by cars? Uh, the way the deer fence is going to go, uh, we're leaving a 10-foot corridor uh, along the Route 24 yeah. fence and along the Cheshire fence. So basically, that's the path the deer take anyway. They, they sleep in that area just behind Cheshire against Route 24 sound wall. I guess they don't like the highway sound. But uh, it won't change their path of where they go now. And I don't believe that they will become any more of a nuisance to the road than they already are. I, don't, I guess, I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's that's my uh, ben? I, I just wanted to uh, mention the Great Swamp Watershed Association's experience with a very similar project, and that's where the, the after photographs came from, including the signage, etc. Um, the Great Swamp Watershed Association w received a gift of 53 acres that had the, attached to them a um, tax bill that we agreed, at that time I was very heavily involved, we agreed to pay. And what we bought was essentially what you see on our 49-acre site. It was overrun with invasive species, not very pretty. Wetlands are, in fact, quite pretty and, and uh, very nice to spend some time in, as long as they look like they're supposed to look and don't look like they look now, which is pretty much ravaged. What, um, what we did was to put up deer fencing around the perimeter of all that acreage, uh, with volunteers, so we paid for the fencing and volunteers put it up. And it's taken several years, but if you go through it now, it's really quite pretty. And parts of it are used by schools in the area to educate their children, uh, their students, on what goes on in a, in a wetlands and teach them about nature. And there are people who use it just for recreational purposes. Both are welcome. Uh, you would not have done that prior to the initiation of this project. And, and my concern in having walked this project, this particular parcel several times, is that the work that's been done to clear areas, whether it be um, around the wetlands or not, to use as paths, will in time get overrun again, unless we do something about it. So this, uh, it, it really is a decision uh, based on taking something that has a great deal of potential in attempting to realize it. And it also has a capacity to be a community-wide effort, which is what it turned out to be with the Great Swamp, where in an average year, and they do track this, they get 7,000 hours of volunteer labor to help them with that particular project. So it's, I'm not saying we'll get 7,000, nor am I saying you absolutely need 7,000. It does require a lot of labor, and I'm sure we'll be able to attract people to get involved. 
So I just wanted to give that as background to a very similar project, not very far from here. Uh, Bob and then Ed. Yeah. Um, you know, when I look at this, you've, a lot of people probably heard the phrase highest and best use for a piece of property. Um, this is a unique opportunity in the state of New Jersey, in particular in the state of Madison, in the town of Madison, rather. Um, there isn't much land like this left. And when Professor Webb from Drew University came down, she talked about how if we do this, as we're planning to do, it becomes a great learning tool and opportunity for all our children. Um, ben spoke about it, and I know Steve mentioned it, that right now there's a wetlands in there, and what's happening is it's, it's going to ruin. And by simply putting the steer fencing and bringing it back to the way it was, um, you'll see the natural and the animals that inhabit that area come back. You'll see the plants that should be there come back. And then the children in school will be able to go in there and see what it should have been. It will give them a greater appreciation for nature for what should have been there. And this is really the best use for that property right now. Ed? Um, mine from a, uh, my, my concerns with a budget, 43000 for fence, but it's not fence, it's this, and we might get a grant. Um, you know, the purpose is good, I just, it seems like the, 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 the budget is kind of not firm and um, not comfortable with that. Uh, you know, is it 43,000, are we gonna get the grant? Maybe after they resolve getting the grant or not getting the grant, then we need to approve all the money. So I'm not sure if we're saying yes to 43 going in, I'm a little uncomfortable because it seems like it might be a gate, might not be a gate, might be a boardwalk, might not be a boardwalk. So go ahead. I can answer that. Yeah. It really would read not to exceed 43,000. Um, that is what I would say, if you want to call it a worst case scenario, that's what it would be. The grant, and from what I'm understanding, we have a good shot of getting it, would cut that in half. The boardwalk, if it needed to be done, would be included. So that's a not to exceed number, okay? Odds are it's gonna be less than that number. But you have to go in with a number so you can get the grant. That's, I was just gonna say <clears throat> that. You have to have, you take the open space dollars so that the, the person who's giving the grant sees that the town is making a commitment. And they then tend to look at your grant favorably because they see that there's gonna be a partnership. And just to reconfirm again, the, the timing of this is because of that grant that uh, we, we have the master plan committee working and ideally it would be yeah. part of that master plan, but uh, in order to be eligible for the grant, we need to get this in, in now. But the, yeah. your, your committee has reviewed this and it is consistent with the direction of the um, master well, plan. Absolutely. I mean, we are, we're doing this ahead of time in consideration of the grant. Uh, the reason that we're talking about the gates, and you'll see this in January when we give the presentation, is uh, the thought is to put a cross-country track in there. To do that, you have to accommodate it with, a, with, the, with the proper gates. Um, the only reason we're doing this out of sequence is so Steve can get the grant application in. And, and just to clarify, because the, the resolution 339 does talk about 43,000 for deer fencing, but you mentioned that it is more than just the deer fencing, is that? Yes, that includes the boardwalk, the kiosk, uh, any signage that has to be built, uh, odds and ends that we haven't thought of yet, uh, odds and ends that we're gonna discover as we move into the project. So we should uh, reword the uh, resolution. Yeah. Uh, uh, or Carmela and then Rob. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 just, I, I just want to say something. I, you're not going to take the $43,000 in a lump sum. I'm assuming that you're going to say to open space, okay, th this is what the deer fencing is going to cost, and you know, with the gates, and then you'll draw down. You know, I, I like resolutions that say up to, you know, uh, 43000 uh, But I, I think we do need clarification. I think the mayor's right is to expand that a little bit. Um, I think this is great because one of the things that I think we're forgetting 
is why one of the reasons that we bought the 49 acres is that aquifer. And if we can su keep supporting that aquifer by doing projects like this, I, I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big investment, but I think it's a worthwhile one. And, you know, at this point, so. The, the, the total plan is spread out over five years. Right. The very first step we decided would be to put the fence up because uh, if the deer come in and eat the shrubs that we replant, then, then our money has been thrown away. So the only money that I would be seeking right away would be the $23,000 for the deer fencing and the gate. Boardwalks are scheduled to go in in 2015. The kiosk will probably be in 2016. Uh, to help with oh, that, uh, let's cut uh, the resolution. Uh, is, down. is writing to the state forestry department trying to get money to buy the trees, the larger trees, rather mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the little tiny seedlings and stuff. And so, depending on his efforts, we'll, we'll we could less and less money from this 43000 But as with any grant that you write, you have no guarantee that you're going to get it. So, you know, that's, this is why we put in for 43000 to, to cover everything that we foresaw in the initial plan so that it, we knew it would be done and, and kind of silly just to fence it all in and stick two gates there and then not do anything. extra money to cover all of that else while taking on the commitment to seek grant departments. Rob, okay. so as it pertains to appropriating money from open space for use of pack re for passive recreation at the 49 acres, I believe in transparency. Okay, um, This does not seem like we're doing uh, the taxpayer a good service. If we only need $23,000 next year for the fences and the gates, then let's appropriate $23,000. If everything else is money that may be spent in 2015 or 2016, then let's leave it till then because open space funds uh, are scarce. Um, there's a lot of uh, need for them. And like I said, in, in, for transparency's sake, and to match off our asset and liability or our spending, I mean, if, if what he says is, is you know, is, is that we, the, what we need are the fences and the gates, then let's appropriate money for that. Anything else I don't think is transparent enough for the taxpayer. Yeah. I, I'm not too sure if transparency is the, the no, right, I think the it's, right I think word. I think it's apropos, and I think it's very but apropos. I, I, I think it's what, um, I, I am a little confused uh, about, because the timing is for the, for the uh, grant application, so, um, what, 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 is, what, what is the amount of money we need to appropriate right now to keep the project moving and to keep the grant application active? It would be for the deer fences. And that's 23. Which is, which is 20, I mean, uh, let me get to the budget section. <clears throat> and while, while you're looking it up, I, I, I think what the, the goal here is is you don't want to, we don't want to put up deer fencing without next steps, nor do we, would we want to do next steps without the deer fencing. So you're trying to get it all in place, but maybe it is a uh, making sure we, we're going forward with what needs to be appropriated right now. I don't think... We're uh, keep uh, the gates. Yeah, yeah, but if I understand but, it correctly, what we need is to bring back native species and to keep the deer out so they don't eat the saplings. So that's the fence and the gates, and right? The, the other stuff, the boardwalk is, would be, and signage, are of course nice to have. We haven't come up with what we need for signage yet. We don't have rules on signage. And the boardwalk we might not even put down, right? right. That The boardwalk is subject to the DEP. Um, yeah, I mean, so, that's, so, you know, so we may have to put those down. Well, yeah. and then, then we'll so. appropriate the money when we hear from that. But in the meantime, I think it's best we just, let's get it done. Let's let them get to work on the, uh, on the grants. But let's just appropriate what we absolutely yeah. need. But he has $23,000 just for fencing, and, and he doesn't know what the gates are, so we can't appropriate no, no, I think your, your, your budget is 23000 for fencing and, and gates. 23050 For fencing and gates. For gates, too? That's, that's what we originally estimated, yes. 
I, I thought you need needed extra for gates. I have to get uh, pricing for someone to actually install so, them. Right. Like I said, <laughs> that a professional should do it because oh, yeah. it's the weakest link in fence, and it's going to take some use as the cross country sure. people keep passing through it. And, and so the twenty three thousand does not cover the installation. Okay, so we, we would need it. So it an installation. Okay, Ben. Uh, I have a question regarding the grant. How does the the grant play into how much money this council allocates? In other words, if we allocate twenty three thousand, does how does that affect the the probability of getting that grant? In your opinion, as opposed to if we come up with a different amount and are more precise about how it's to be spent? Uh, the fact that the town is offering that as a matching grant. And that gives leverage. Oh, the fact that the grant goes into PSENG as a matching grant gives leverage uh, sway PSENG to actually grant us. So, so, so does 20, 25,000, let's say, just throw it. 25,000 would cover everything and probably leave a few dollars over for shrubs. Right, right. What, um, basically what I'm trying to do is make sure there's, you said 23,000 materials plus the installation of the gates, so maybe, two, let's say, $2,000. Does that 20, if the, if the resolution was for 25,000, does that change what the p potential grant would be? No. Okay. No, not at all. Okay. So, Ben? Yeah, I was going to say my sense is that uh, no one seems to be adverse to the whole idea. No. It's rather an issue of how the money is to be rolled out and what it's to be spent on. Uh, my only concern is that over time, as the council changes in composition, as you remind us often and correctly, yeah. uh, what we do doesn't bind a future council. This could turn out in some ways to be a big waste of money if we, do, if we have a future council that says, no, we don't want to spend any money on shrubs in there. So I'm just wondering if there's a way to do this that has a contingency in the future. I suppose, having said it out loud, there isn't. But, yeah. Yeah. but, but we, I would we, have we, a much we, higher <laughs> comfort level. If but I, but we, if we do, we do have, co coming in the new year, the, the presentation from the work of the uh, Passive Recreation Master Plan Committee. And, you know, Excuse me. The uh, new, uh, you know, the, the council in 2014 could start taking steps with open space funds to and continue to fund it. To commit um, to that. Yeah, I, I, I think, and Rob, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think when you use the word transparency, that it implies that people are hiding, trying to hide something. But he was I think this committee, this committee was working hard to do the best possible thing, um, but right now we just need to fund what is on the table and fund what can make the maximum um, grant possibilities, which sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I've got one. Full service council. Um, but if, if it was $25,000, you can do what your, your, your goal that you came here for tonight. Is that true? Yes. Okay. But, yeah, and I'll, and I'll buy that. Um, you know, we'll get it going. I think the w use of the word transparency or lack thereof was not the proper phrase to be used. Um, the fact that everything was put out on the table shows what we're being proposed, what's being proposed. What I appreciate is the thought process that, you know, maybe the money be rolled out different. Um, you know, for Steve to get up there give a very, what I think is a very thorough and thoughtful presentation about everything we're trying to do. And the resolution itself is very clear in what we're attempting to do. He explained it very well. Um, it was a very transparent presentation, so I want to thank him for that. And I do accept the idea that maybe we just roll out the money now. It's a good suggestion. The 25000 to get the deer fencing done, and then we'll start working on the next piece next year. So, so that with, with that in mind, the resolution, the word in the resolution can now stay the way it is because it talks about only mm -hmm. deer, fun, we'll deer fencing. And we will change it to $25,000. Mm -hmm. That's substantial. Well, well it has, this way. hasn't been, it's not an ordinance, has, so this is just a, it's a resolution for. Yeah, I, yeah, so. I understand that. It's a resolution, that, but you can do it here. Yep. Okay. It would just be 
you would, <coughs> what I would do is suggest that you make the change to 25,000. We'll do it by hand, and then whoever calls, whoever makes the motion, should note that it's being amended to say $25,000. Um, it's a resolution of the Borough of Madison authorizing the use of up to instead of 43,000, say 25,000. Ed, just, just a question. Uh, will this these type purchases go through our purchasing department? It, it, it all is. is it's no, yeah, okay. yeah. It, it is all Bur Borough Madison purchase. It's uh, yeah. Not the, the committee does a lot of work, but they're not the ones okay. making making the purchase. Um, and just, I, I think it is helpful. Any um, whether it's for open space, whatever, is a well well defined project. First half of this project was well defined, and I, I think the the comfort level on the second part of it for the council members was not quite there because it's maybe a boardwalk, maybe not, and so that's I think that was the issue. So, so we'll uh, this will stay on the consent agenda with the uh, the change of twenty up to twenty five thousand. Yeah, just, there's there's four changes throughout, changing forty three to twenty five in the various whereas clauses in the final. And again, it's 25000 up to that amount. Yep. If it's less, if the fence comes out less and the installation is less, then we won't appropriate. It won't appropriate less than 25000 Yep. Works for me. And thank you for all your hard work and your work on getting grants. And uh, we, we look forward to the full presentation of the passive uh, plan in, in the new year. January. Yep. yep. Thanks, Steve. All right, our next, uh, basically everything except for item 10 are all related to uh, year-end. Um, Robert? Yeah. No, it's my neck. I can't look up at that screen. It's hard. Mayor, I have uh, seven agenda recommend recommendations with seven resolutions, and these are all routine uh, items at year end. First is the corrective action plan. Uh, there were ten recommendations, none of which were material at all. Any questions on any of those? Get to them. Nope. Okay. Next one. Um, could could oh, I? Sorry. On, on the uh, corrective action plan? Right. Um, I want to make sure I under, I went through this, and, and being an accountant, I just want to go through my notes. I don't think I had. No, I had no note. Excuse okay. me. I, All right. Before you moved on, I want to make sure, because I went through every one of them. Go ahead. All right, so that's resolution 332. Okay. Next item is cancellation of 16 ordinances in the general capital fund, uh, freeing up $85,000 to go in the capital improvement fund at year end. Questions on that one? Are these projects completed? All, all yep. completed. I canceled the ordinance. I'm, all right. That's resolution 333. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, I want to cancel outstanding checks and bank errors on the next resolution. All right. 334. Uh, the next item is, comes from the uh, 10 recommendations in the corrective action plan to review old trust fund reserves for possible cancellations. I've, I've identified five uh, that I'm recommending to cancel, uh, freeing up $21,000. Any questions on that one? Resolution uh, 335. Yeah, I did have a, uh, again, I'm trying to, I have some questions. I don't think we've gotten to the issues. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Budget, budget transfers. Budget transfers. There are two: forty thousand dollars for police overtime, ten thousand dollars for a municipal court, which was a, a budget omission uh, on my part. 
questions on that one? Resolution 336. Merge the next one, emergency appropriations, with which Ben already uh, kind of set that one up. But um, the November and December purchase power bills are still outstanding. Uh, I believe we're going to spend approximately $16.3 million. November, December are, are generally months that are not difficult to estimate based on uh, kilowatt hour consumption as well as the uh, pass through charges. Um, so, therefore, I'm requesting uh, $500,000 in an emergency appropriation that will be placed in the 2014 budget. Okay, that's resolution 337. Any. Uh and cancellation of general capital grant receivables. And then lastly, this is also from one of the 10 recommendations in the corrective action plan to review old grant receivables. The, there, there are three that I'm recommending to cancel. Uh, two are related to this building project, and one is a uh, Department of Transportation grant that was applied for in the year 2000. We, we, I believe we collected 150 of the 155,000 uh, therefore, I'm recommending we cancel this grant. And now we got the... This is the one I wanted to ask about. Are we... If I read this right, we're going to give this money back? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Okay. No, all it is is a receivable sitting on our balance sheet. This is money we expect to come in? No, no, we do not expect to receive any of this. A receivable we're, says it's you're expecting well, to receive it. Well, we've received everything from the New Jersey Historic Grant that we're uh, eligible for, and we've received everything from the, from the Hartley Dodge Memorial Trustees Grant that, that uh, we have applied for. And in this, the, so, the main reason item number three appears is because the, the grant receivable was set up for $400,000. The trustees spent their uh, funds on different lighting and, and carpeting, and therefore we would not receive that. So, so they, they did some, some of these projects directly. Right. So instead of the borough doing it and getting reimbursed. So okay, so I see receivables so, this morning yeah. supposed to come to us, yeah. and I'm saying we're talking about you know $25,000 yeah. per year. So My it, question it, is, can we use some of this? Right, so, so in essence, we had the 130 on there as a receivable, but the work was already done in a different way, so it should have been removed. Okay. Okay. Any, so that one is resolution 334, 344 rather. That's Hold everything. on, Robert. Yes. Last uh, of the uh, discussion items is the Borough Council bylaws review. We did one two years ago. Um, I put this on the agenda just, there was a discussion about on the um, council agenda that we have the two separate discussion uh, sections and maybe combining those. The other thing to consider is, uh, I had suggested a couple, uh, probably two years ago was a code of conduct. At the time, we used a version from a, another state. I've had uh, Matt Giacobbe review that and redline that, and so there's a possibility of even adopting that. And the process for that would be to go through the bylaws and council if we wanted to proceed. So one is if there is uh, interest in doing a bylaw review, um, and it would be more than just those two items as we remove and clean things up. Thoughts? I have one. Armel? Uh, you know, I spent a little time on this, and um, there, there were a, a couple of questions that I had, and... Um, I think it probably needs a complete review. Uh, I talked a little bit uh, to the borough clerk about this as well. Um, and we, we really should get this uh, kind of straightened out. It, if you saw the original and the red lining on it, um, it makes statements about uh, some of the committees that uh, we're just not following. So we need to make decisions about those. So um, I, I think it probably has to be looked at um, you know, one more time, I'd like to see the incorporation of uh, the code of conduct uh, right in the bylaws as well. Uh, so that's my suggestion with that. And the, the process is um, the mayor appoints and the uh, council approves. There'd be three council members that would uh, serve on the bylaws review committee, and, and it would be a. I, I agree also to, to 
did a little bit, little bit of it last year or two years ago, but there are some things that we've changed in practice and may not be reflected. So it's either we have to make our practice reflect the bylaws or we need to make the bylaws reflect, reflect our practice. Right. Rob? I agree with changing the uh, comment section. Uh, the code of conduct, as it was presented two years ago, you know, came from Colorado and a yeah. different sort of law, uh, state law or something, municipal law. So, unless it's dramatically different, I'm well, not that, in that, favor of including that. that. that this, this time, we uh, pretty much from your suggestion, which was make sure it's consistent with New Jersey law, and that's what uh, Matt did. And the process would be for a bylaws review committee to look at it first and then present it to the whole council. So, it would be a, uh, you know, not just force fed on us. What would be the time frame for the bylaw review committee? I mean, when would you start? My, my uh, thought would be appointed on the re reorg meeting on the first, and then, uh, you know, probably use January to, um, to review. We would, uh, as, as, as is needed reorg, we would adopt the current bylaws on January 1st, and then after review and consensus from the council is adopt the uh, revised version. For those that are interested in serving on it can uh, let me know and we'll, uh, I will talk to the uh, volunteers and we'll uh, approve on the fr January 1. Thank you. Any other thoughts or comments? All right, and we now move on to ordinances for hearings. Ordinance is scheduled for hearing were introduced by title and passed on a first reading at the regular meeting of the council held on November the 13th, 2013. They were posted and filed according to law and copies were made available to the general public request. Those copies were made available to the general public requesting same. There there's, we go. There's something about the dais today. Yes. We can't speak well up Does here. It? <laughs> <laughs> it must be the water. There you go. <laughs> I call up the ordinances for second reading and ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 47, 2013, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, establishing a standing advisory audit committee. I open the hearing. Does anyone in the public wish to comment on Ordinance 47, 2013? Seeing none, I close the hearing. I have a motion to, uh, on, to move on 47, Ordinance 47-2013. I second that. Council discussion? Rob? Thank you. Um, again, I, I, while I, I believe in strategic review process, as it pertains to this particular committee, I'm, I'm still struggling to understand um, primarily what is the specific problem the formation of would address. And I, I understand that you know, we have a borough administrator, an assistant borough administrator, a CFO, we hire an outside audit committee, and the state has very strict laws, basically, on the audit process. So how would this committee interact with our hired staff, our hired auditor, and at the same time really be able to affect change given the regulation imposed upon us by the state? Uh, you know, I, I know that, 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 that citizens are willing to volunteer their time, and you know, it's, you know, I think it's important uh, that we reward that and we encourage it. But in this particular, maybe it's maybe it's just a semantics thing that I'm not understanding, but I just don't understand, you know, uh, how they would interact and really what effect they could have, considering our our paid professional staff, our outside auditor, and the state regulations. Ben, you want to? Sure. I'm happy to do that. Um, to, to begin uh, answering at, the, at the, uh, the first thing you raised, there is no problem, as far as I know. There's no problem that this addresses. It's really a question of um, how do you run the show? And uh, typically in organizations, whether they be profit or not for profit, uh, the, the uh, staff is very much involved in the audit process from the beginning of assigning an auditor to the end of the process, 
where they review the audit results, and it's something we, of course, all hear about and opine on. But having said that, there's a lot that goes on in that process that we don't review. And it is, uh, that has to do with how it is that we select the auditing firms we do. Um, are we comfortable with the fact that we very rarely change auditing firms? I mean, there's a whole host of questions that none of us get into. And they're questions that are worth asking. It, it doesn't mean there's a problem. Uh, it means it's a way to prevent a problem. And uh, typically, the uh, ex officio members of this committee would be the chief financial officer and the administration of the town. So um, they wouldn't be excluded from the process, but the, there would be some autonomy to the citizens of our, um, of our borough to have a, a look at what goes on in the financial aspect of this. Ed? So I share, you know, we're gonna call uh, citizens to help us, and, and I think that is a good thing. But uh, again, I fool with what is the problem. Uh, and I think you, you, you said that. But I also, my education, my responsibility has always been when I was in industry, it was audit review. And taking a look at the 10 items here, unless you're, and if you want to inject a committee on that type of discussion, then you know it's a really a basic procedural thing in your accounting department. Now, if you don't, if you want to change the auditors, which is justifiable every once in a while to keep it mixed, and people don't get too comfortable with the auditors, I think you could probably achieve that without setting up another committee. The other thing I just concerned with is: is there enough meat on the bones for if we attract? I don't know how many people, four people, eight people, and uh, for them to d contribute. Um, again, I've been through a lot of audits. Uh, it gets, sometimes it gets deep, and, and if you don't know accounting policies and procedures, it's, it's gonna put most people to sleep, nor I'm not sure outsiders of a new process would understand what's even going on. So from a, my experience, uh, my undergraduates in accounting, I've uh, been through a lot of audits myself uh, to bring an outside group in. I'm not sure if it's going to add much of value. I, I think one of the uh, key things is the minimum number of meetings is far fewer than most of the other uh, standing committees we have with, with three public meetings. And my, my involvement with uh, in the nonprofit world is more often than not, you have an audit committee. The YMCA certainly has an audit committee, and they um, do exactly what is outlined in here and also uh, react to, you know, the recommendations of, um, that come back from the audit, audit is, you know, we see these recommendations and we, um, depending on who's sitting on the council, either have a very good understanding or uh, maybe not a very strong understanding, but the audit committee would be the expertise, expertise that could help us. Ben? Um, the, the reason I initially proposed this is in my own experience, and I'm kind of surprised to hear Councilman Rebholt say what he just did, because um, I have never served on a, a not-for-profit or a for-profit organization's board that didn't have an audit committee. I mean, it's just standard practice, and in fact, in Sarbanes-Oxley, I mean, much is made of the presence of audit committees. And Sarbanes-Oxley is increasingly being applied to not-for-profits as well as for-profit companies. Now, I'm not saying you do it just to check a box. I just think it's, it, it, we have a rather small uh, staff who looks after what's a pretty appreciable budget and a process that I've seen uh, as a, an observer, not a member of the council, sometimes manipulated for the wrong reasons. And I'm suggesting that we have the expertise in town and people who have been auditors professionally who could give us advice and be helpful in this process. It is not that I see a problem. It's not that I'm losing sleep worrying about someone absconding with our funds. I just think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those 
one of those uh, institutional arrangements that is so commonplace that my initial reaction in finding we didn't have one was surprise. Yep. Uh, Rob and then Bob. But does it translate, does your experience and, and our experience translate freely into municipal government where... I'm sorry, I didn't uh, hear that. I'm sorry, the, our, experience, our combined experience with audit committees. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, I work for the French now, so we have auditors all the time. People love to come to New York. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it seems like that's all they're doing. Um, but these people are typically empowered uh, to make a, you know, make change. Mm -hmm. And my concern is that with the state law that really um, lays out the guidelines for, you know what we do, mm -hmm. um, that there might not be uh, uh, the ability for these volunteers to affect change. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, I, I'm not afraid to, to say that I, I'm not, while I love volunteerism and I think it's important, you know, I don't see making committees unless they can really affect serious change. So for me, I don't, uh, maybe I don't understand it well enough. Um, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm not sure there's that ability that would, that would translate from the uh, private world or even the not-for-profit in, into, mm -hmm. municip into municipal government. Well, uh, Bob? And then, then yeah. the Austria. When I first read this, and I just have a couple of questions, they're not going to, are they going to be taking part in the formation of the budget? No. Oh. So they're just going to be looking at our principles such as when we talked about, um, you know, what uh, Rob Kalf said, you know, like the uh, audit issues that came up, you know, are we compliant with those? So they're effectively going to be an advisory committee mm -hmm. that will kind of stand by with the administrators and just lend some advice as far as, well, maybe you want to look at this firm, maybe you want to take a look at that. They, as far as the effect change, and I understand what the councilman's saying, the change that they could affect is maybe they would see something that we don't see. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And if there's no meat on the bone, then there's no meat on the bone. If we're doing everything great, then they're mum. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Austri? Thank you. I, I don't necessarily look at it as their sole purpose is to affect change. It's more to me a check and a balance um, that we're asking for another set of eyes um, that have expertise in the area. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Ed, and then back to Ben again. Okay. Um, <clears throat> again, it, it's not mandated, mandated by the state. Okay. Uh, I think you're, you're putting people overlooking the paid administrators. You know, these 12 or 10 incidents of, of out of the audit are not material, and it's you know, detailed procedures, and 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 we have a as as a council can demand a change in auditors. I believe if that's what you're getting at. I'm just don't want us to abuse volunteers, and and is there enough meat? You have a one report that's put out once a year with some recommendations, and if you look at the recommendations, they're absolutely minor, and it's typically on a, a, a event like that. If they were major, they'd be on our desk, and we would have to react to them, too. So I, I just see that, you know, because Salisbury Alexley might demand a public company to do it, the state of New Jersey does not demand us to do it, nor I think it's, it's a bit of a, uh, an overkill uh, to our professional staff, and that is all I'm going to say. Any other comment? Ben, and then uh, I think we're... I didn't... I didn't you, you made reference to 10 items. I'm not sure what the, that is. The, 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 is, is, is audit review. The, 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 management, the management recommendations? The audit, the audit. Okay. Audits. okay. I, I wasn't yeah. sure what you were referring right. to. Right. No, no, that's, and that's the meat of the audit. Correct. And yep. if I look at it, it's minor. Uh, and I look at it because yeah, I've, I've run counting organizations and... It's just little procedures that they, they, they missed or whatever. It's not major. So, uh, and that's typical. If you had a major thing, you'd have a red flag, and that's why you have auditors, and then we would jump in. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to put that out 
you know, in, in, in the public if we had a major issue. So. Well, uh, <laughs> in discussing this with the administration, uh, they didn't have any problems with it. And um, I would second what Austri said, which is not, I'm not looking at this as an engine of great change. I'm looking at this as, as a way of ensuring that this council is well informed about financial matters and knows precisely what's going on when we get audited. And that's something I didn't feel, and it's no comment on any presentation, but I certainly didn't feel that myself as, as a result of the last audit report. I mean, it's, uh, it was fine as far as it went, but I would like to hear a little more. And I wouldn't mind if there were three or four people who operated as volunteers who looked over someone's shoulder and came back to this council and said, we're quite comfortable with what we see. And certainly, if we had a major issue, I, I would hope it would be public. That we, yes, uh, I would hope so, too. Um, Carmela and then Bob. Um, I, I just want to make one, one short comment. Um, if you look at the, um, the audit uh, that was done two years ago, there were uh, certain items that were said that were absolutely necessary for us to change. And the Savaccia looked at it, which is the uh, 2014 uh, auditor and says that it doesn't it doesn't appear that it's absolutely necessary to make those changes now to me I, I read it and I, you know I listen these are the professionals so you have to go by it but that puts a question in my mind so I mean somebody like this you know uh, four people saying well well who exactly is right you know what should we be doing and uh, we're volunteers we don't have as much time to look into that, but if it's in, in one small, concise uh, committee like this, they could at least advise, I would think, the rest of the council, you know, uh, the auditor from two years ago was probably absolutely right, and we have to make those changes. So it's, it's, not, it's not looking at, I don't think, the professional staff here, my opinion. I think it's looking at the auditors as well. And then you make your decisions about, you know, what you want to do moving forward as far as auditors are concerned. So, Bob, but that that's just my short thought. Okay, um, and this will be the last one I'll say. I promise. <laughs> um, to the extent that this is solely an advisory committee, and that none of us here would be bound what by what they say, you know, it would be something that they would bring to Ben, and then Ben would bring to Council. I'm assuming that's the way it would work. Or they, or they may come directly to, in a presentation around the right. Audit. Yeah, whatever. But um, the, 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 To me, it sounds like it's just having some local professionals from town take another look and see what, you know, maybe we could do something better. Maybe we don't do it, need to do anything better. Um, and like I said before, if there's, if we're doing everything fine and they say this is a waste of time, they're volunteers, they walk away from it. Um, but as long as we're not bound by what they say um, and that it filters through a council liaison, then, you know, I don't see what much harm is there in doing it. Okay, Rob, and I think then we're okay. ready. Okay. So j just um, as we go to vote is um, two couples, you know, recognizing Rob's comment, government entity is far different than a pro uh, for-profit or a non-profit. But I do see this as a, a best practice. Um, you know, it, it just is, in my mind, a, a common sense thing, just as a be best practice. So um, we'll see how it evolves, and hopefully it's uh, approved. Uh, do we know of other towns that have that. similar audit committees? Uh, I didn't do extensive research on that, no. But it's, on the other hand, if you, if you uh, just Google municipal uh, <coughs> audit committees, you get quite a response. I'll also say that I did talk to auditors about this. Since I'm not one, you know, I didn't want to propose something and then have people oh, say to me, you know, how could you have thought to do that? And in fact, auditors, at least one, was quite surprised that we don't have such a committee. The others were uh, in the middle. They said, you know, it makes sense. You probably should do it. It's up to you. But one out of three said, I, I can't believe you guys don't have one. All right, ready for 
Roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello. That's what's the drag about being the senior guy, how you have to vote yep. first. Mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> um, I'll say yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholtz? Yes. I declare Ordinance 47 2013 adopted and finally passed, and I ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 48 2013, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 12 of the Borough Code entitled uh, Court. I open the hearing for Ordinance 48 2013. Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 48-2013. I second it. Council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholz? Yes. I declare Ordinance 48-2013 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish the notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 49-2013, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 34 of the Borough Code entitled Police Department. I open the hearing for Ordinance 49-2013. Anyone in the public wish to be heard? Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 49-2013. I second it. Council discussion? Roll call of vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholt? Yes. I declare Ordinance 49-2013 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. And now we are on to invitation for discussion and this is one you can speak on any topic. But again, state your name, your address, record the same on the clipboard, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone wishing to be heard? Mary Beth Forte, 7 Academy Road. First, thank you, Bob, for keeping us at the top of the list to you and your group. Uh, we did catch that Academy Road is still at the top of the list, so thank you. And we're looking forward to the budget hearings in January where money will be appropriated to fix our broken street. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to be heard? Didn't see you back there, Mark. Welcome. There's, uh... Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor. My name is Mark Yeager. I am the uh, owner of uh, the 39 Green Village Road uh, property here in Madison. And uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you very much uh, to the Mayor, to uh, Ray Cody, to Jim Burnett, all the members of the Council, the Planning Board, all the staff and uh, departments here in town uh, in uh, addressing this matter in front of you tonight regarding the, uh, the consent agenda for naming 39 Green Village Road an area in need of rehabilitation. Um, it's been obviously an incredibly difficult uh, last several weeks having to, uh, to deal with all that's uh, been associated with that building, including uh, the fact that we need to, to move on taking care of some safety issues there, which will result in the, in the complete demolition of that building in the very near future. But um, clearly, with the support that you've all shown in trying to move this uh, issue as expeditiously as you possibly can with the goal of trying to get that project back on its feet. I just, uh, amidst all of the disappointment, I just wanted to ensure you that my goal is to work with you, work with uh, all the different departments and the staff planning board here in town to, uh, to get things turned around, get it going again, and at the end of the day to deliver a project that everyone in the uh, borough of Madison is proud of. So I just wanted to say thank you very, very much, and I, I do greatly appreciate all of your efforts. You're welcome. And I don't know if you were here earlier when uh, Ms. Bailey made her report, but I want to thank you for the dinner you provided for the first responders. I think the first responders would be first to say, we don't need to be thanked. We do this because of our dedication. But I'm from that room, being in that room, they truly appreciated that you knew what they went through and uh, put themselves out there. So thank you I, so I, much I, for I doing that. I appreciate that. that. It, was, it was my pleasure. The least I could have done. Thank you. Carmen?
Don't worry, I'm not here to ask you to do anything tonight. What I am here <laughs> for is, this has been a long year for the council. You guys did a lot of good things for the town. And as a Madisonian, I was born and raised here. I just want to thank everybody that gave up their time this year to take care of our town. Because without the council doing the job that they've been doing, the town could have really gotten in reverse. So I just want to say thank you again. I know I thanked you before, but you can never thank somebody enough for making your town where everybody wants to come and live. So thanks again. Have a healthy uh, holiday, whichever you decide to do. But please, let's see everybody in, in January 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Always good, good holiday wishes there. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Zimmer. Uh, Richard Zipper, Greenwood Avenue, Madison. Um, <clears throat> this is a little spur of the moment, but it's been something that's been on my mind for a long time. Madison is a very nice town. It was mentioned many times tonight, and our downtown area is beautiful. Um, and it, the downtown area has had a bit of a building boom lately. Um, I, um, I think that um, the, ta the buildings that they put up um, are too close to the road. Maybe the sidewalks could be wider, and I, I'll give you my reasons. I'm sure the um, zoning setback was made a long time ago for the main street, and the buildings obviously conform to that. But nowadays, uh, the buildings are they're adding all kinds of flourishes to the buildings, such as um, uh, gas lights on the sidewalks, benches, uh, stoops. <coughs> planters, which take away from the sidewalk. Um, a lot of very lovely cities and towns, one of the things that makes them really nice is the nice wide sidewalks that people have to stroll to the downtown area and do their shopping. Um, specifically, um, the building that they put up at, by Dornix, um, that was a bank they put up. And um, there was lots of property behind. It went all the way back to Coke Avenue. There was no reason, practical reason, why they couldn't have moved that building back three feet or four feet and made the sidewalk more inviting. Um, the uh, drugstore that they put on the corner of Greenwood, um, it, what they replaced offered a very wide view of the corner. Now, there's a lot of pedestrians that, that use that corner, school children going to the junior school, and traffic. And the building they put up, being close to the road, took away a lot of that vision um, and openness. Um, the Napa building that they're working <coughs> on right now, they're doing a good effort of saving the old facade of the, of the old or the old movie theater. The new portion that they're building alongside of it actually doesn't even line up with the old building. It's about six inches further towards the road, which reduces the sidewalk from what it was before, even. I don't see why they couldn't have made that six inches further away from the road would have had the same visual effect. Um, I don't know if you can change the setbacks, but I think it may be something that you might want to consider going forward because it sounds like um, the downtown area is going to start moving east. Um, you have the um, Jaguar place that's going to be uh, redeveloped. So as the downtown marches, along, I think it would enhance it for future generations if the sidewalks were wider. Thank you. So we can Thank you. take that to planning board. And Anyone else wishing to be heard? 
Seeing none, close this part of the uh, meeting. And there are, since this is our last meeting of the year, there are no ordinances for introduction and consent agenda resolutions. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move uh, consent agendas um, resolution 328-2013 to uh, resolution 338-2013. Resolution 339-2013 has been changed authorizing the use of up to $25,000 to replace $43,000 in the municipal uh, open space funds for deer fencing. Um, and then there's resolution um, 340-2013 to 349-2013. Mayor, I second. Discussion? Roll call a vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholz? Yes. There's no unfinished business because it's the end of the year. That's a good thing. <laughs> Approval of vouchers. Got about those vouchers. Okay. We have public safety eleven thousand one hundred and eighty seven dollars and thirty cents. Health and public assistance two thousand two hundred and eighty seven dollars seven cents. Public works and engineering one hundred and eighty three thousand seven hundred and fifty four dollars sixty two cents. Community Affairs, $6,379.17. Finance and Borough Clerk, $3,774,390.33. And Utilities, $41,928.59. Total is $4,019,927.08. Uh, Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll we'll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholt? Yes. And the only thing under new business is happy holidays to all and a happy and healthy new year, and we'll see you back here 1 o'clock on New Year's Day. Mayor, in my final presence on the council, <laughs> I move to adjourn this meeting. Yeah. Um, I still have